You know, there's just so many different career options in tech, whether you want to be a full stack engineer, platform engineer, DevOps engineer, QA engineer, there's all these different choices. And the thing about it is, is the learning curve for all of them is pretty steep. I mean, you're looking at a ton of time and effort to get into one of these careers. So I think one of the best things that we can do is share with people what it looks like once you've completed that path to make sure that this is what they want to do before they invest a ton of time and resources into a career path and then ultimately find out, oh, dude, that's not really what I thought I was going to be doing at all. Hey, what's going on, guys? I am Will Button. This is DevOps for Developers. And so let's jump into like the first thing that catches people off guard whenever they enter a career in tech. And that is you're never done learning. Like regardless of whether you went to a university or a boot camp or your local college, once you're done there, you're not done learning. There's always new technology coming out that you're going to be responsible for and working with. So you have to be okay with working a full-time job, but then also making sure you're keeping your skills up to date and relevant so that you maintain your status as an employable employee. Hey, what's going on? Thanks for checking out my new course on Node.js 10. Hey, what's going on? Thanks for checking out my new course on Node.js 11, Node.js 12, Node.js 13, Python, Docker, Kubernetes, AWS, Ansible, Terraform, GCP, Azure, Linux, CICD, Jenkins, Bash Fundamentals. The next thing is that you might not be working on your favorite technology. So you might be infatuated with Python-based APIs in AWS, but at the end of the day, you got to bring home a paycheck so you can pay your bills, right? So you might end up working at a job that has their own physical data center and they're supporting a Java application that's 20 years old and it's going to stay that way because that's the powerhouse of their business and the cost of converting that to something new might not be worth the effort or the returns that that would bring. Okay, so every morning whenever you get into the office, you've got to click this button to start off the day's processing. Got it? Uh, okay, why don't we just automate clicking the button? <laughs> right, because honestly, like nobody really knows how this works, so we would have to tear apart the application, figure out how it works to automate it, and it's actually critical to the business and just really nobody wants to take that on so just click the button okay and you might not even have devops in your title because ultimately devops is how we get the code to production not who gets it to production so the different roles and responsibilities that any devops title can have may vary if you even have devops in your title at all because it's very possible likely and actually kind of preferred that DevOps is done by everyone on the team, not just by the person who has the DevOps title. Yo, they're getting ready to deploy the website to production. You wanna come monitor it and make sure nothing goes down? Uh, yeah, sure, I guess. If you work on the operational side of DevOps, you've got to be okay with frequent task switching. So if you're the kind of person who just needs big blocks of time to sit down and focus, then that's gonna be something for you to consider. And another part of that is ultimately, everything is your responsibility. If you're the, in the operational side, when things are broken, it's gonna get escalated to you, even if you don't really understand what's going on or how it got into that state. Yo, the dev team just did a release and everything's down. So would you mind taking a look? Uh, that's weird. Did you ask them what they deployed? Yeah, we asked them. They said there was nothing wrong, that it's probably just the network. And this one, I really can't drive home this point enough, but if you work in technology, it's not really a consistent nine to five job. Some days you're going to put in 12 or 14 hours. Some days you might get to knock off early, but understand that there will be times whenever you have to miss birthday parties or dinners or events with friends just to hit the goals that your team has to hit. Now, hopefully in the long run of your career, those are very infrequent, but I can guarantee that they're gonna happen. And so you have to be aware that that's gonna happen. 
prepared for it so that you're not caught off guard when it does happen. After listening to all that, if you're still excited about a career in DevOps, all I can say is welcome to the Thunderdome. If you're not sure though, then write down your questions and leave them in the comments below. I'll answer all of them. Or if you want to carry the conversation out further, come on over to the Discord, devopsfordevelopers.io slash Discord. And we've got a bunch of people in there who are willing and eager to help you out. If this is the thing you want to do and you're committed to this now, be sure and check out my free roadmap guide that I'll link down below that will help you understand the different parts of DevOps that you need to work on your skills for. And then go check out my DIY DevOps video that introduces some different projects you can do to start building your DevOps skills. And I'll see y'all in the next video.